Welcome to another Lessons in Logic video. We're going to continue our look at value today. In the last video, we showed how the Rating V module gave a great insight into pre-match value. Today, we are going to take this concept a step further using one of CGM Bet's newest modules, Advanced Poisson. This module has been around for about a month now, so we've taken the time to understand it before getting a video out. This does take a bit of getting your head around, so we're going to take things nice and slow to ensure you can understand the concept. Before we start, a lot of viewers continue to ask why I give my software away for free. As I've always mentioned, this software is only free to CGM Bet users. I know I could make some good money from selling it, especially when I see what some traders are prepared to pay each month for various services. I have a demanding job though, and I cannot commit to offering the support that I would expect if I were paying serious money for software. All I ask in return is that you like my videos and hit the subscribe button so that YouTube knows that the videos deserve a wider audience. And if you really do want to contribute financially, I've included a donate link below, but there is absolutely no pressure for you to click this button. But I know some of you have mentioned it previously that you would like to. So getting back to today's video, the first thing we're going to do is look at previous games in the Premier League and we'll go back to the 21-22 season up to to date. So we've loaded in all of these fixtures here and the next thing to do is to work out how we are going to calculate the expected goals. Now the default is the goals scored by the home team plus the goals conceded by the away team divided by two for the home team goals and the goals scored by the away team plus the goals conceded by the home team, divided by two for the away team goals, which is a standard formula, which we've used many times before on other videos. Uh, other things we can use here are the league averages and the averages for this filtered table. Um, but for this example, we're just going to keep it nice and simple by using the default. So we can also choose the period, uh, whether we choose the current season or the last X amount of games for each team. Again, we'll leave that on the current season. And we can also look at the just the first half or the second half, or we can just select um, a subset of the game in between minutes, but we'll leave it on the full game. Uh, excluding outliers, so if you've got a team which, say, on average wins 2-0 or loses 2-0, then if there's a 7-0 in there, then we can exclude that so as not to skew any averages. Uh, and that's a nice little feature. And what we'll do then is, based on the formulas we've got in here and the criteria, then we're gonna calculate the results for these last uh, four or five seasons worth of games. So now we have all the data in here, then we can move over to the right-hand panel of the screen and play around with the metrics in here. So what we've got is, we're not gonna change the dependencies on the nil-nil and one-one. Um, if there was a lot of these scores, then uh, you, you can change the, the weighting behind them up here. Um, but what we're seeing at the moment is we've got the results as value, which is what these percentages are. And we're excluding uh, NA games. So early games in the season when we haven't got enough data to uh, calculate realistically any kind of profit or loss, we're excluding those games. And the highlights are if there's any value in the game between 15 and 70%. So we can see here that there appears to be quite a lot of value in the English Premier League on these. We'll come back to actually study these in more detail shortly. Um, but first of all, we need to look at the uh, hit rate and the yield. So again, this is just looking for any value odds here. We could do it for all games, but that would be gambling, as you can appreciate. Uh, we just want to bet on value games and not just random games throughout the season. So we can see here, the out of the home games, where there's value, we have 388 games, we've got a hit rate of 24%, and we've got a significant 15% loss on the yield there. So we can ignore that. Uh, the 1.25% for the draw, although it's green, it's, um, it's not significant enough profit, so we can ignore that. And we can take out the other red ones. Now, the over 1.5 goals, there's a 100% hit rate here where there's value, giving us a nice 37% yield, but we've only got a sample size of eight, so we'll ignore that one too. And in fact, the only ones we're going to look at in this example is the over two and a half goals and the both teams to score, which for those of you that know CGM bet, is the GG option here. 
what this is saying is that in the period from the 2021-22 season to the current season so far, the software has found 143 games where the odds are giving us value. And we'll come on to what we mean by value shortly. Out of those 143 games, then there's a hit rate of just over 54%. So only just over half. With the odds on these 143 games, then we've got a 7.34% overall profit. And the same with the both teams to score. There's 110 games here. We've only got a hit rate of 51.82% but we've got a 6.33% uh, profit on the yield. So what we can do is we can sort this grid um, just by clicking on the headers here. So we can now see the games which have got the most value in here for over two and a half goals. Now the first one obviously did hit, but the second one didn't hit. Um, and neither did the third one. Although these are in green, they can be a bit misleading that you think you've won. when in fact, they're just highlighting that there would have been exceptional value on these games if they did hit so what we can do is we can change the highlight to value and correct result and what that has given us now is we've just got the highlight here where the value has been realized so in the top game we've got um, over two and a half goals which we did and we've got both teams to score which we did the next one even though the value was high uh, we didn't get over two and a half goals and we didn't get both teams to score likewise with the next game down And then we've got a few more where we did. In the Wolves versus Forest game, we didn't hit the two and a half goals, but we've got both teams to score. So again, you can change the graphical representation here just for ease of use, depending on what you're looking at. And obviously the scores here are colour-coded. Green for home win, uh, yellow for a draw, and Samany Pink for an away win. So now we have our baselines. We can actually filter these a little bit further. We can look at the ELO and form differences to filter the games to maybe try and improve these numbers. Or we can look at the odds. So if we looked at the odds on the over two and a half goals, and if we look between 1.3 and 1.7, just for example, we can see that the over two and a half goal sample size has dropped to 14 with only 4.71% return. Whereas the both teams to score, the yield has gone up. Games have halved, it was 110 before, we're now down at 51. So that's probably not a good uh, one to, to use because we're reducing our sample size greatly and there could be a lot of noise now around these numbers. But that's just to show quickly how we can filter these things out um, even further and maybe even find some more value. But I'm not confident by putting that over two and a half filter on that the quality of the data has improved. So we'll remove that again and we'll just go back to our previous uh, data set. So you might be thinking, how does this software work out value? It's actually quite simple. What we'll do is we'll run our selection again, but this time we'll run it with the calculated odds rather than value. And what we can see here is that the software is showing Everton versus West Ham over two and a half goals. Uh, The calculated odds for this to happen is 1.63, which is obviously it is highlighted in green there because it thinks this is value. What we do now is if we look at the real odds that the bookmakers were offering for this same event, and we can see that the odds are 2.03. So that's a 0.4 difference. So the difference between the calculated odds and the offered odds at the bookmaker, as we saw in the rating V module, is where the value comes from. And the software has worked out that the value between those odds is 19.65% in this case. Now, as it turns out, that was a loss. Uh, It finished 1-0 to West Ham. So there would have been um, a full loss on the stake there if it was a set and forget. But in the long term, you would be profitable with the odds difference that this market presented to us. So now we've identified our profitable markets and we know the ranges that are profitable. We can look at this with future games to see if any of these meet the criteria. So we're going to calculate the next three days games in the English Premier League. And we can see straight away that Aston Villa versus Burnley on the over two and a half goals. And also the both teams to score is coming up um, as value. Whereas Wolves versus Brighton, the odds are given as value on just the over two and a half goals market. And we can see this with the calculated odds. So Aston Villa versus Burnley, uh, 147 on the over two and a half, 161 on both teams to score. 
And Wolves Brighton 141 on over two and a half. And the current odds with the um, the bookmakers are 192 for over two and a half goals in the Villa game, uh, 199 both teams to score, and Wolves Brighton um, 189 on the over two and a half goals. So there's a significant difference there. Uh, and that's what the software is highlighting here. That these games, when they happen uh, this coming weekend, then you are getting value on these markets at these prices. So just a reminder, the software is not saying this is going to happen, this is a tip. It is identifying an imbalance in the odds between the calculated price and the current bookmaker's price. And that's what you should be looking at as traders. Before we conclude the video, just a quick mention for these indicators in the bottom right hand corner. These initially caused confusion as people assume these were percentages. They are not, they're just a rating that just happens to be out of 100. And uh, there's no relationship between the indicators. So the over 0.5 indicator is not related to the over 1.5 indicator, which is not related to the both teams to score indicator. They're all independent. And they're just an indicator of the quality of the findings of the data here. It doesn't mean there's a 90% chance it's going to hit. It's a, it is just an indicator based on a lot of mathematical functions and logarithms as to the actual quality of the data behind these calculations. Hopefully this video has shown yet another way of analysing value. Without knowing the real value of a trade, you'll never be able to sustain a long-term profit. Hit rates don't give you the full picture. So if someone tells you that they have a 90% hit rate, they will need odds of 1.11 to break even without commission. If they are getting less than this, or are unable to tell you the price information, then their 90% strategy isn't going to be profitable. Sadly, YouTubers are able to convince a large amount of viewers that these are killer strategies. I'm here to not only tell you, but also to show you that they are not. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more of CGM Bet's unique features, please do like and subscribe and also use my link which is below and get yourself a nice discount on the list price of CGM Bet. With each video that I'm now showing you, it's plain to see why CGM Bet should be your software of choice if you are serious about trading and data. Thank you for watching.